What's going on guys? Kevin the Tech Ninja here. When it came to my smart home, I became extremely complacent and lazy. I had things offline, things no longer working, and I had four different apps to do different things. So I decided to do some upgrades and this is the first one. In this video, I'll talk about the setup tools and how I actually installed the iPad on my wall. Then I will go into hardware, software, everything that it takes to make it work. This video may be kind of long, so if you do want to skip around to different topics, feel free. The video is timestamped down below for your convenience. I've been big on Samsung SmartThings for so many years, but Samsung stopped making new SmartThings products. They honestly got lapped by the competition. So last year, I kind of dabbled into HomeKit, but this year I did a full blitz and dove in head first. The cool thing with HomeKit is that most of the objects works with Google Home too. And my wife as an Android user, she kind of needs that flexibility too. And we also have Google products scattered throughout the house that I didn't want to replace with HomePod minis. So making sure everything works in both ecosystems is very important for me. Also, HomeKit is super fast, it's baked into iOS, and as an iPhone user, an iPad user, and Mac user, and all that stuff, it had to work in one spot, and it had to be easy, and HomeKit was the solution. This is my wall-mounted iPad. It's an iPad mini that I bought refurbished on eBay for 250 bucks, and I'm using a wall mount from Amazon. Now, look, you're gonna scoff at the price, I get it, this was on the expensive side, but I needed something to match the decor of the house and something I can know that it's gonna be up there and stay for a long time. This is the best looking one I found and I had to bite the bullet at $150. I saw this on Shane Waitley's channel. He makes great home kit videos. I'm linking his channel down below. After seeing this on his channel, I knew that this was the route I wanted to go. Now, depending on your situation, getting something like this on the wall could be pretty easy, but for me, it wasn't as straightforward. So naturally, I didn't have a plug here, so I needed to find a recessed two gang box, and then I ran power from the light switch below. I installed a USB-C outlet. Once we worked through those logistics, it was as easy as installing the mount and snapping it right into place. Now that it's on the wall, I can access Smart Home using the Home Plus app. Originally, I wanted to use the stock HomeKit Home app, but I quickly found out in landscape mode that it looks really bad. It lists all of your rooms on the side and it takes up a lot of the screen. Home Plus app lets you customize things a bit further, letting you change icons for certain objects. It also lets you make a favorites dashboard so all the stuff you access often like cameras, sensors, lights are all in one spot that is easy to get to. Plus you can do some advanced automation too. Now this doesn't come free. It is a $15 app, but it's staying on my iPad 24 seven. So it was well worth the purchase. Now, speaking of sensors, lights, cameras, and all that stuff, let's talk about the hardware that I'm using. First of all, we need to talk about light switches. I think these are more important than smart bulbs. Now these are critical for making my house smart. I've gone through cheaper switches in the past, but those led to frustrations down the line with you know, inconsistencies within the apps, the brightness, and even the switches just going offline for some random reason. I was ignoring every single person that would tell me, you gotta buy Lutron switches, you need to buy Lutron, you need to spend the money, because I just didn't wanna spend the money for these switches. But I will say after making the move, they were totally right. They are so worth the price. These Lutron switches are super premium. The buttons are clicky and they just feel high end. The Lutron app works pretty well too, lets you set up rooms and it works for iOS and Android, but I put everything in HomeKit so I don't have to use an extra app. It just makes things easier to use. I have switches in every single room. So in HomeKit, every room is now reachable. These Lutron switches also works for other voice assistants. So once again, getting my wife to use her Google commands, it's not a problem at all. I do have a weird lighting situation in my den. If I wanna turn off all six lights in my den, there are four separate switches. Before the smart home, I had to flick every single switch to turn off the lights in a certain order. 
So in HomeKit, what I did was I set up an automation that if one Lutron switch is triggered on, then the rest of the lights will turn on too. Same if the lights turn off, which made it really simple. So no matter which switch I'm at, I can control all the lights in that room. I also have three different lighting scenes. Relax, which is 20% light. Everyday, which is 50% light. And Bright, which is 100% light. These little remotes are called Pico remotes and you can program these to activate your Lutron switches. So I have one for the bedroom and it's really nice because you can use this remote as like a three-way switch. There's even a wall mount for it, which I'm not using, but there's also a stand too, which you can put on top of the table. These little guys I have scattered throughout my house and it's just really nice if I don't feel like using voice assistant or if someone in my house doesn't know the command. Now, speaking of smart bulbs, there are so many of them out there. And for my basement down here, I need about 12 bulbs because I do want to control the color of each light when I'm doing videos and things like that. So right now for me, Singled was a low cost option for the bulbs that I needed to replace. It does require a hub, but the hub to me makes it more reliable. These bulbs do get plenty bright in the white hue, but once you start changing colors, they do noticeably get darker. I tend to keep things in the white temperature, but I will change a bulb from time to time for an effect on a wall. And yes, it has an app. It's not great, but the beauty of HomeKit is that it goes right into HomeKit and I don't have to go into the app ever again. Singlet also does have light strips too, and I put one under the couch in the basement and it looks pretty good. And also I bought some more light strips to go in my cabinets too. So for all of the sensors in my house, Acara is what I use. You have to buy the hub, but the hub is an alarm system with a siren and it also doubles as a nightlight. I have temperature sensors in all my rooms. I have leak detectors under all my sinks. I have a motion detector in my foyer that kicks on the light when motion is detected. I have doors and window sensors and when my door opens up, the hub chimes a sound. A car makes the smart home practical and they also have cameras now. This camera you're looking at right now doubles as a hub too. So instead of buying that hub alarm system, you can now buy this hub camera. I have not did a deep dive into it yet and testing it all the way out yet. I just literally got it installed, but so far so good. I also have a button that I can program to run scenes. And in the basement, if I tap the button, it launches a different color scheme for these lights. And also it turns off my refrigerator. So basically when I tap this button right here, it sets it up so I'm ready to shoot a video. If I press and hold it, all the lights turn off in the basement. A very powerful button that I use quite often, the fireplace is exposed to HomeKit 2. Um, this fireplace is a gas insert, so it provides heat for my whole downstairs. It's around 20 cents per hour to run and it's 75,000 BTU. It has an RF remote that's used to turn it off and on and adjust levels. So taking that remote and putting it on HomeKit requires a couple products. One product I'm using is called Bond. I've had this for around four years now. It takes any RF signal and converts it to a smart signal. I have it programmed to the fireplace. So now I tap a button on my phone in HomeKit to turn off and on the fireplace, or I just use my voice talking to Siri or Google Home. I also took things a step further and set up an automation that if the temperature is lower than a certain number, it kicks on. Bond is $99 and it's been used every day during the winter since I got it four years ago. The cameras I'm using around my house are Nest. They've been the cameras I've been using before I switched over to HomeKit and I wanted to keep using that. They're actually not supported in HomeKit, so I'm using something called Hoops. Hoops converts non-HomeKit things into HomeKit. I gotta be honest, it's not super straightforward, but everything does have instructions. So using Hoops, I can take objects that don't support HomeKit and put them in HomeKit. On the iPad I mentioned, I'm using the Home Plus app. I locked it into guidance mode, so there's no way getting out of the Home Plus app unless you know the password. The iPad also does time out after 10 minutes, but as long as there's activity in the den, the iPad does not lock. I have a notification set up to go off if the car motion sensor notices motion in the den, then a notification wakes the iPad. 
Thanks again to Shane for setting that up. So now my iPad isn't on 24 seven. It just pops on when someone's in the area. Anyways, guys, that's all I have. That's what's going on in my smart home right now. I'm doing a full tour of my basement really soon, making some few changes, but once that's done, I'll be posting that video. Anyways, guys, Kevin the Tech Ninja here. Hopefully you have yourself a great day. Talk to you guys later. Peace.